name is Dennis. I am the English pastor at Vinewood CFC. And I'm Chris. I am the English minister at Vinewood CFC. And I want to welcome you to another episode of our podcast, Heard It Through the Grapevine, where we hope to encourage you in your faith and knowledge of God by giving you biblical and theological clarity to your questions about faith and life. And this week, we have a good friend of mine, Pastor Joey from CFC San Jose. And uh, yeah, thank you for coming, Joey. We're really glad that you're here. Why don't you uh, spend some time introducing yourself? Sure. Uh, as uh, Pastor Dennis mentioned, I uh, serve at Chinese for Christ Church of San Jose. So it's actually the the church I grew up in, uh, the church I would visit, you know, my home church throughout college, and then uh, the church I actually came back to serve after graduating from seminary. So I've been pastoring there this coming uh, end of June, beginning of July will be 17 years. So uh, I started off as a youth pastor there, now currently the English pastor. Um, I'm married uh, to Margaret. Uh, we've been married this coming October will be 14 years. Uh, we've got Three boys, uh, Dominic, uh, age coming up on, oh my goodness, he's going to be 12 in August. Uh, Isaac, who's uh, going to, who's nine, coming up on 10. And then baby Lucas, who is going to be one year old uh, on June 10th. So uh, our house is very full, very loud, <laughs> lots of boys. So the toilet seat is always up in our homes. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice. I am a uh, Red Sox fan, as you can see with my shirt here. Uh, oh, man. I love baseball. I uh, coach uh, Little League. Uh, so been doing that for about six years now. Definitely missing that, obviously, with uh, COVID-19 shelter in place. So just a little bit about me. Yeah, Joey, uh, I like to call him the pastor of pastors. He's one of those guys <laughs> that I met about what five years ago yeah something like something, that something yeah. like that we were at a Taiwan mission trip together and ever since then he would just time to time uh, message me follow up with me I even introduced him to one of my friends from the seminary that's not even from this area and wow. when we talk he told me that yeah you know Joey's been kept uh Joey's just been really helpful and some of the things he's been sorting through so this is definitely a guy that loves people and cares for pastors, especially for young pastors like me. Mm. And so I'm just incredibly grateful for you, Joey, and just so thankful that you can be, be here. And again, you know, one of the other things we have in common is that we both are big fans of uh, cheating organizations. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> certain teams cheat a little bit more than others, so we'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> Some just don't have the money or the big market to uh, get the free pass. This is going to turn into a sports podcast. Huh? Yes, I know, right? Much more interesting than that. Yes. <laughs> but I just wanted to just kind of open up how, how have you been doing? How, what, what, what have you been up to during Shelter in Place, everybody? Yeah, so uh, it's, it's been an interesting season of life. I think uh, actually for us as a family, it took us about a month or so to get used to everything being online, especially with our boys in school. Mm. Um, but we've definitely found a good rhythm of life. And I honestly, personally, I've been sharing with people in our church that the biggest difficulty challenge has actually just been baby Lucas not sleeping through the night. So he's waking up like oh, two man. to three times a night. So, uh, but otherwise, obviously we're missing people, we're missing activities, uh, all those things that everyone else is dealing with as well. But, mm. uh, but we're enjoying the time together as a family. We, uh, my wife and I are very thankful we're able to, you know, eat all three meals together with our kids and uh, our boys are learning how to cook a bit more. So they're helping out a bit more and, you know, evenings we're able to play board games together and stuff like that. So we're very thankful uh, in many ways for this season, but also obviously missing and mourning and grieving a lot of different things too, you know, so um, we had a, at a wedding I was supposed to officiate in March that we had to cancel or postpone due to shelter in place COVID-19. So. Yeah, this this the silver lining to all of this is definitely the opportunity to be at home with family. Uh, I think all of us are very fortunate to be able to work from home mm -hmm. and you know, definitely from home Amen. And, and still still actually get paid. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah, you, Jesus. Was, yeah, thank you, thank yeah. you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And yeah, I think one of the things I realized just I think it was today I was filling out one of those uh, questionnaire surveys from from my daughter's school, and I realized. Mm -hmm. This is probably the first time since they were newborns that I've seen them every mm. day, <laughs> yeah. nonstop. Yeah. And, you know, like, cause once, once she got to like six months or whatever it was, you know, she started going to daycare and things like yeah. that. So, 
in some sense, I'm trying to treasure and take advantage of this time that we have as a family that we are constantly in contact with each other. We get to see them a lot. And, and, and like what you're saying, it, it's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah how, how have you been doing, Chris? Yeah, no, I've, I've been uh, better. I've been getting better. <laughs> it's been hard. Um, past couple episodes, I've been answering this question and, uh, you know, uh, much like you, Pastor Joe, it's just really hard to get used to this idea, mm-hmm. being an extrovert, wanting to, to be with people, hear people's yeah. stories. Uh, one of my uh, talents or gifts or, or strengths is um, really getting to know people and, and helping them. And yeah. it's really hard now because I can't help them. <laughs> and yeah. They're at home, right? And, and uh, they don't really... Uh, maybe we'll get into this later about online communication and worship. Yeah. It's hard to communicate and to yeah. figure out what yeah. really is going on. And so it's just been hard on me, but um, yeah. it's funny that you bring up family. I think it's been great uh, to, to my, my wife and I have been reflecting on, yeah, just uh, we have a 11 and a half month old. Okay. And oh, wow. So, okay. Yeah. you know, uh, my wife uh, went back to work after um, six months uh, okay. with, yeah. with our daughter, Hannah yeah. And then she went to work for two months and then shelter in place happened. And now we yeah. get to spend all the time with her. And deep yeah. down inside, uh, my wife wanted to spend a whole year mm. with, with, you know, yeah. every single day. And sure enough, yeah. her wish was granted. So, <laughs> um, and, yeah. and she, she doesn't regret it. As a matter of fact, yeah. she's kind of relapsing back to that when she was six months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to leave Hannah Yeah, uh, um, because her school uh, my uh, wife teaches preschool, and so they're oh, contemplating okay. restarting or uh, opening up again. Yeah. Currently, she does it through Zoom, mm. uh, two times a day with preschool students, which is amazing. But wow! Um, so they're going to open up soon, um, and so she's starting to feel that a little bit of anxiety leaving our daughter again. But uh, it's been great. It's a huge blessing to be able wow. to spend all this time uh, with our family. You know, is she together. sleeping through the night? She is. Oh, she's sleeping. Okay. She's sleeping great. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yes. Praise she's, God. <laughs> yes. Praise God. But every two weeks, every two weeks, there's something wrong. <laughs> or not wrong, but there's just, she doesn't go down for a nap or something yeah. like that. But yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so funny because yeah. we had Pastor Josh on last week and <laughs> there was that season where every, COC, Berkeley, San Jose, and Hayward, the pa- e- there's a pastor in each church that had a kid in like within a month time frame and <laughs> his son just turned one yesterday i believe of time of recording and so uh-huh. it's just kind of crazy how that happened <laughs> yeah i think his youngest is one month older than our youngest so yeah uh-huh. so, yeah. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> I, I i i baked this week so i made wow. some you know butter cookies i'll bring some to church for our live stream thank you and and Dana cut my hair. My wife cut my hair. The last time, good, she, man. I hope so, because I had to gel it or it would have been really bad. The <laughs> last time she cut my hair was when Maddie was maybe one year old and she gave me a full cut. <laughs> <laughs> and I refused to let her touch my hair until, well, until now, because I have no other choice. <laughs> That's oh, funny. Yeah. Or you just go with this. You can't go yes. wrong. You know, you can't I, mess I up know. this. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. I essentially gave all. I essentially gave that haircut to my son. So he has a very similar to yours, Joey. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. But today uh, we got another question. And so what we want to talk about, Pastor Chris hinted that a little bit, is is online worship a legitimate replacement for gathering in person? Mm. And I know that Pastor Joey and I have been having conversation about this just in one of those regular checkups that Joey wanted to have with me. And we chatted about this and I, it, Joey's been super thoughtful about these things and we had a lot of opportunity to talk about that. And so I wanted to bring, bring you on, Joey, and mm-hmm. just I want to hear your thoughts. So is, is online worship a legitimate replacement for, for the local church for worship? Okay, so uh, short answer, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it is not a legitimate replacement uh, for gathering in person and worship of God. Um, I think given special circumstances or even perhaps in a temporary nature wise, uh, yes. Uh, but it, I would say it's not a legitimate, like long term, full replacement for uh, worshiping together uh, with the communion of saints or in a local body. So. 
All right, we're done, yeah. right? <laughs> All right, well, thank you. Everybody. Yeah, I know, thank you, guys. <laughs> no, you're right. Uh, yeah. uh, I, I, you're absolutely right. I think, why don't you kind of dive, dive in a little bit deeper on, well, what makes gathering in person different than, than logging online? Yeah, and I think, I mean, this question can go a lot of directions in terms of answers and thoughts. I think, you know, one facet of this question is what do we understand about what the church is and what the mm. church is not? Uh, and also even what is the difference between maybe attending or visiting or watching a worship service online versus actually being part of a church as well, right? Sure. So for example, like on a Sunday morning, I can <clears throat> watch a million different churches services online uh, but that doesn't necessarily make me uh, a part of that church community too right so i guess in one way yeah is it okay to watch a worship service or listen to a sermon online I sh of course but does that replace uh the physical gathering and being part of a local church no right so i think there's that component too right um, sure. And so I guess in the question that they're asking in this online worship legitimate replacement for gathering in person, uh, I say no, but it's okay to listen to a sermon or online, you know, that's fine, right? You can do that any day, any time, yeah. but that is never meant to replace one being part of a local church and then two gathering physically with uh, the local church. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, for example, one of one of the churches and pastors that I deeply respect is Matt Chandler from the Village mm -hmm. Church in yeah, Flower yeah. Mound, Texas, and mm -hmm. they obviously do a lot of stuff, produce a lot of material and content. And Matt Chandler, being an incredibly gifted speaker and, and preacher, but at every before every message, there's always a clip of him telling them that hey. That, that, this is only supplemental. Mm -hmm, yeah. We're glad that you, this would help you in any way, but mm -hmm. in essentially encouraging the listeners that this is not a replacement for you joining a local church, being mm -hmm. part of a local church body. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just super helpful because, because the local church and the gathering of the saints in corporate worship uh, can't just be distilled down to receiving teaching and mm -hmm. having it just go one way it's much it's much more than that that's kind of what i'm hearing uh, what you're saying uh yeah right like it's it's not just hearing uh, a message that mm -hmm. makes a church a church yeah yeah right and i think that gets into like ecclesiology then right in terms of what mm -hmm. we believe what is the church and even what is the role of the church sure. right if we think about if i just attend a worship service online like pastor dennis you mentioned that's very uh, me-centered in the sense of I'm receiving something, okay? I'm getting a sermon, right? But church isn't just about me receiving something. It's also a community where I can serve and care for other people as well, mm -hmm. right? And obviously, we can get into the whole, like, consumeristic approach to church, right? And that happens even in the physical <laughs> gathering of churches, right? Some people just show up on a Sunday, right, uh, attend the service, and then leave and never really actively engage in and participate in the regular life of the church and so i think there's yeah. that kind of concern right where if you attend or worship online you can just kind of click in click out and just kind of receive but actually never be a part of the life of the church um sure i, th I think the other aspect too is thinking about uh what is the church so I i've been you know wrestling and thinking through this a lot in terms of even online versus you know physical gathering and you know on one hand i think even when we think about what does it mean to be a part of the church it's important to distinguish between the universal catholic church versus the local church and so yes of course as christians we're all part of the universal catholic church right uh and that's over time history and space geography right mm -hmm. that the spirit of God through Christ unites all of God's people, uh, right, in every continent around the world throughout history, right? We are part of the church, the universal church, the Catholic church. And in that kind of context, there's no physical assembly gathered required, right? Um, mm -hmm. Right, but when we think about a local church, right, there's a specific time and a specific place, there's a physical gathering of God's people. So the local church is 
distinct and different than the universal church, but it's not either or, right? We're part of the universal church and we ought to be a part of a local church. Right. You and know? and for our listeners, when Pastor Joey says the uh, Catholic church, he's not talking about- Lower KC. Big, yeah. big <laughs> Lower KC. <laughs> yes. Right. Yep. And so he's, uh, yeah. And so can one- can one theoretically be part of the universal church and not be part of the local church then? Yeah, I would say no. Obviously there's extra, extraordinary circumstance, Mm -hmm. right? If I'm in, if I'm a believer in a country uh, where Christians are persecuted and you're, you know, Christianity is basically outlawed or banned and I cannot join or be a part of a local church, that's obviously, you know, just real circumstances that are beyond my control. Right. But I think, you know, as we read throughout scripture, you know, that God calls people not just to himself, but God calls people together corporately uh, to 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 be a, a body of believers. Right. Not just universal, but locally, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I know, Pastor Chris, you and I, we've been discussing a lot about uh, just a little bit of what Pastor Joe has been talking about, the consumeristic yeah. aspect of church in general and that yeah. seems to get expounded even more when we take it online uh, totally. do you have any thoughts about that or just want to kind of share a little bit about what you've been thinking that regard yeah i mean you know i think the the strange thing about online worship because i know we do this and, and probably that's that'll be uh, a little further down in our conversation but um is as much as we want to admit it it's still one way mm-hmm. right there is no yeah. face-to-face interaction there's a study um, that was posted in new york times um, that one of our church members sent to me, and it's about like the strange uh, and, and kind of exhausting nature of Zoom, <laughs> how like it's actually been really challenging for many people, and they can't really put their finger on it. They can't, like after a Zoom call, they're just exhausted, and every single day, like people feel like they're working even harder, and part of it is because it's, um, they're starting to, to find out that actually uh, human face-to-face interaction without a filter, without mm-hmm. a digital filter, um, there's so many nuances, right? Nonverbal cues, uh, facial uh, cues that we don't even know we're doing, but we're mm-hmm. receiving that information from someone else that helps us read someone else, right? And so even, even on a Sunday morning, when you physically see the pastor there preaching and you're sitting next to um, a brother or sister in Christ who's breathing and, and living and interacting with what's being preached, there's something uh, spiritual and I guess you can say supernatural at the same time uh, that happens in that corporate worship and, and community it's not it's not just what I want to receive it's also you're giving right you're responding to what the mm-hmm. pastor is preaching you're responding in worship but you're also receiving what the pastor is communicating it's it's mm-hmm. two ways yeah. um, and and I'm I was reading uh, I've been reading this book um, not not just for this podcast but just in general and I don't know if it was timely or not timely, but uh, a recent book, Analog Church, um, Mm. just came out. And and I've been reading this, and and there's a a part that he posted here that actually uh, said that Mark Zuckerberg quoted recently uh, in regards to Facebook that uh, he believes that Facebook, they're going to increase its its way of connecting people and creating better community. And he says, if we can do that, uh, then membership to a church or, or whatever clubs or anything will increase. And he even claimed that Facebook will be the new church. <laughs> That's what he said. And then in response, a journalist, Peter uh, um, Ormrod, I think I got that right. I'm just going to read it verbatim. And yeah. I love this quote. He says this, at their best, churches offer a perspective on life fundamentally opposed to the culture Facebook encourages uh, and upon which it, it feeds. Churches at their best bring us into contact with people we would never think of as friends. Yes. Right? If you think about it, we would never be friends with some of these people at our churches, and yet we are. Uh, There are cliques, of course, but we all come to the same table and drink from the same cup Mm -hmm. and sing the same songs and say the same prayers. The Lord's Prayer, which is what Dennis and I were were going through right now, the Lord's Prayer, um, after all, is not in the singular, but the plural. Give us today our daily bread. Mm -hmm. It is breaking down of barriers, an awareness of mutual responsibility and dependence, a celebration of brokenness. It's an unsanitized experience of humanity and all the healthier for it, right? A good church is more than just a social network. It's a place of transcendence, space, silence, peace, devotion, richness, and depth. Yeah, and so his response to Zuckerberg is no matter how grand Zuckerberg's vision may be, they will never be a competitor to that of the local church. 
to actually yeah. sit next to someone that you just can't do on an online platform. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so I thought that was really profound and, it, you know, and it's a non-Christian journalist mm-hmm. who wrote that. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think it hits it right, right on the, right on the nail. This is the, one of the greatest social experiments that we have seen in our day to day that everyone's sheltered in place and you yeah. are called to distant, physically distance mm-hmm. at least you know six feet from each mm-hmm. other mm-hmm. and it is so incredibly hard because we are created to be communal we're, com- yeah. we're created to to have relationships we're created as physical beings uh, mm-hmm. there is the internet cannot replace that mm-hmm. yeah. social media yeah. has been at the height of all humanity yet loneliness is still very rampant mm-hmm. depression still rampant and all these things isolation still rampant yeah. and you can see that right now even in our shelter in place mm-hmm. people are starving for real genuine community and connection people mm-hmm. want to see each other they want to spend time with one another they actually want to be in the same room with one another yes. and so i think that it's it, it'd be it'd be it would be absurd to say that we can replace the physical tr- gathering of the saints, the corporate gathering of the saints with the on- an online gathering. If mm-hmm. just everyday life, we can't even replicate that. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. not even possible yeah. for us to replicate that in everyday life. And it'd be even less so in, in the church gathering. Um, some of the things I was thinking of is that just to touch on with what, what Pastor Chris was saying, it's a one-way thing. Uh, it's mm-hmm. so funny that well, one, I just don't even know what's going on in the lives yep. of yeah. my of my of my uh, congregation. I, I sit there and will make phone calls, and a lot, you know, a lot of times it's like one on one calls. And you know, I got my group group of you know five, six, seven people to call. We mm-hmm. at our church, we split up all the members and our leadership team. We we're going around calling everybody just to kind yeah. of check in and see how everyone is. And it, and it's weird because it's like I realize I haven't talked to you in like over a month. I don't know what's going on. And and they'll say, and you know, when I talk to people or see people online, they'll say, Oh yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll see you on Sunday. And I was like, No, no, no I will I will not see you. Yeah. You will see me, You'll but see I will me. not That's see right. you. That's right. And and yeah. and so it 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 is not the same. We also online church, it lacks accountability. Mm-hmm. We just act differently when we don't feel like there's a sense of accountability right like mm-hmm. when we think that we um when pe- when we don't feel like people are watching us we just act different mm-hmm. there was that there was that uh, article where that one man i think he was doing a cnn interview and he dressed from the from the top up mm-hmm. he was wearing, yeah. and he's wearing shorts and it's, it's really funny yeah. because he, he positioned himself in a way that yeah. you yeah, and you know like we there's just this thing that there's yeah. this lack of accountability when we're yeah. not together yeah. it becomes way more consumer oriented and not mm-hmm. corporate oriented yeah. highly individualized because it's yeah. what am i getting out of it mm-hmm. versus what how do we you know uh gather together to worship god um yeah, yeah. no definitely i mean i think even when you think about the musical singing component of worship right when we're worshiping god together physically in the same space at the same time we hear one another singing to god right but when we worship through music and song online the only person we're hearing is ourselves and to be honest i know like even some people from my church are not singing during that time i already know it yeah Yeah. right and when we think about even the, the, the corporate nature of singing it's like we're singing to god I think it's in uh, Mike Cosper's book, Rhythms of Grace. I think he talks about the upward, inward, outward component of singing, that when we're physically gathered together, on one hand, you know, worship of God, sing, that is through singing, is singing to God, the vertical dimension. But we're actually also singing to one another as a church community, that there's something edifying as we hear one another sing, worship to God. But then also as we corporately, physically gather to sing, we're also singing to the world as well, Mm -hmm. right? Like proclaiming to the world, this is the God that we worship. This is Christ who we love and who we cherish, you know, and that can't, is very difficult, right? Like even, you know, when we're worshiping on a Sunday morning at home, uh, I can't hear anyone else sing, Mm -hmm. right? And, And as you're saying too, Pastor Dennis, like even when I'm preaching, it's like, I miss preaching to a congregation where i could see everyone yeah yeah right right now i'm looking at a screen i can see a couple faces but it's not the same mm-hmm. you know like yeah 
Yeah. And I think one thing too. Oh, sorry. Go oh, ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Go no, ahead. I was just going to say, yeah, it's yeah. surprising. Like, I think for most uh, of our congregation, they don't actually realize when we preach yeah. how much we feed off of mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the people that we see. Right, because yeah. when, when we physically see the sure we see the people that fall asleep, but yeah. <laughs> and we try to maybe in, engage a little bit more, but we see the people that are tracking. But then just the people in our congregation, uh, yeah. like our past one-on-one -on -one conversations yes. with them, comes yes. to mind as yes. we're preaching exactly. God's word, and I think that's the Holy Spirit working. Yes. And we start shifting perhaps some yep. of what we're saying or adding to it, and that yeah. that that supernatural power mm -hmm. through the Holy yeah. Spirit when we preach that's missing. Yes. It's just you yeah. lose a lot of life, right? And so yeah. it's so hard. Yeah. And yeah. so that's why, um, you know, for, for everyone listening, if you're a congregation member, we miss you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like, we yeah. need you, you know, there. Yeah. Yeah. We can't shepherd a, an invisible flock. And, exactly. And it's just like what you're saying, where sometimes when you're preaching and you see a, a confused face, you realize, oh, I need to clarify this mm -hmm. more. Yeah. This mm -hmm. more, say this more. Yeah. yeah. And so go ahead, Pastor Joe. What other thing, uh, what other point that were you trying to make before? Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, I think it was interesting. I was talking to some other pastor friends as well on the issue of like, you know, communion online and just things in general and how, you know, there's in Christians even kind of a, sometimes a, a stream of like Gnosticism that can creep into kind of our belief too. Gnosticism, you know, second century, first century. Uh, there's different streams of Gnosticism, but basically in essence, maybe for listeners that may not be familiar with Gnosticism is, it's basically uh, this belief of kind of the separation of the spiritual or the soul and the physical, right? This idea that the physical is inferior, is perhaps even evil or tainted, and that the spiritual or the soul is kind of pure and good, right? And so in Gnosticism, oftentimes uh, they would deny the physical incarnation of Christ, right? Well, if, you know, if Jesus was fully God, then he can't be human because being human means, you know, it, it's evil, right? There's something uh, distorted or not good about something that is physical, right? And I think there's this interesting aspect of like when we think about online versus in person, that somehow there's a separation, the split, Right of, well, we can still have relationships and connection just online, right? As if we're minimizing or even saying that a physical gathering is somehow inferior or not needed, right? Wow. That we're kind of rupturing, right? That God has created us as physical beings, yeah, right? Like not just yeah. spiritual. And even when we think about, you know, eschatology, right? That yes, like heaven, we're, we're going to have new, there's new creation, new heaven and new earth right? We're not just going to be a soulless spirit kind of floating around, but we will have new resurrection bodies, right? And so I think even when we think about kind of the virtual versus physical, there can kind of be that aspect of separating the spiritual and the physical and the importance mm. of the physical or minimizing in some ways, sometimes minimizing the importance of the physical too. Yeah, yeah that's a great, that's a great point. And if, uh, for our listeners, if you want to know a little bit more about that, in our very first episode, we did talk about mm -hmm. uh, practicing communion online where Pastor Chris and I, and, and I've had lots of conversation with Pastor Joey as well, that uh, we feel like it is best for the church to postpone for the Lord's Supper until we can physically gather again. I think what you mentioned was great, that there is yeah. that sense that there is an overemphasis on the spiritual aspect. It's the spirituality, quote unquote, of it versus actually physically being together. Yeah. And there also there's the overemphasis on the individuality of it versus the corporateness. And, mm -hmm. and so I think for us and uh, for Vinewood, we said that we, we won't live stream mm -hmm. when we can end this shelter in place. Now, there's going to yeah. be a ramp down, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, uh, but we don't intend to have this ever be a replacement for yeah. the local church i think some of the things to think about also is why why have this online online avenue why why replace it and i think there are some you know good thoughts to that as well mm -hmm. there is the mm -hmm. uh you know some people are providentially hindered from being able to go to yes. church maybe yeah. physically right yes but I think for some people, the, the response is it's easier. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I wake up five minutes before worship happens. Or, you know, I yeah. don't have to change and I don't you can have lie to, in bed, right? I can lie in bed. <laughs> That's right. I, I don't That's have right. to, I don't have to, I don't have to like 
have conversation with people that I'm, I might have a hard time having conversation with and things mm -hmm. like that. And yeah. I think one of the things that was really cool when I was doing some research about this or reading articles, somebody wrote that church and Sunday morning, the corporate worship it is not just the intentional, but mm -hmm. the accidental as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's not just like the intentional singing and worshiping and preaching and praying the word, which is all good and important for the mm -hmm. church but it's also the accidental as well having those conversations and being able to catch up with people praying with people outside of the church mm -hmm. and getting to know what's going on in each other's lives yeah and so yeah. i think uh, as we maybe start wrapping this up a little bit i want us to shift a little bit because clearly we are live streaming i think mm -hmm. all of our churches are live streaming yeah. and we mm -hmm. just completely just uh tore yeah. that down and said that, that is not church right yeah. but we are live streaming right now uh, so how should we think about live streaming in our current situation uh, since we're doing it and we just said it's not church? Yeah. 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 I mean, I, maybe I can start, you know, I think first of all, just to give some, some biblical context, the reason uh, we, we said, it's not a replacement, right? Hebrews mm -hmm. yeah. 10, 25, uh, 24 to 25. And let us uh, consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together physically meeting. And you just can't do that online, mm -hmm. right? It's yeah. just hard. Yeah. And so that's why we say it's not a replacement, but I think something earlier you said, Dennis is um, perhaps this is a supplement and that's a better way to look at it, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's a temporary thing. And I think, um, the, the only time that I uh, can, can think of that it's okay to meet online and to have online worship, to have it as a supplement, is if physically meeting is impossible, mm -hmm. right? We talked about it briefly, like what if, you know, you're a missionary, right? Planting a church, right? Mm -hmm. Or something like that. You don't yeah. have a local body. Sure, you can worship online to, with the universal church. Mm -hmm. um, let's say, you know, uh, uh, the underground church, Right. If it's too challenging to meet physically in person, we were talking in our uh, in episode one with our um, new Chinese minister, uh, Pastor Chen Guang, and he was talking about you know the the kind of underground church movement that he was a part of. He was an elder, and kind of the the reasons why he was able to take communion and do baptism online because if you physically meet together, you can get arrested. Right. You know. So so there are nuances to it, and yeah. right now whether by law or for health reasons, we we are not allowed to meet together. We just are not allowed, uh, but we've been given the opportunity to live stream, right? And I think that that's something that we should we should leverage. It's, it's technology that we can leverage. Um, I was listening to a podcast on this. Uh, funny, we're doing a podcast, but uh, just a podcast and, you know, leveraging technology is not bad. Right. And, and I don't want to blame anyone for whether they're doing it right or wrong, because we don't have any historical context when it comes to technology and online. Right. But from from what I know, like from history, I guess the Reformation would be a good one um, where, you know, we think that like John Calvin and we think, uh, you know, Luther during the Reformation, they were just all over the place preaching. But in reality, there were very few trained and qualified preachers. And so what did they do? Well, the invention of the printing press technology they printed the sermons and people physically read the sermons. Mm -hmm. yep. Nowadays, we'd call it pirating, right? But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's what they did. They leveraged technology for the yeah. glory of God. And so mm -hmm. for a time being, yeah. until they were qualified people. Yeah. And so I, I would say the same goes for, for what we're doing now. We understand that this will end. We know that this will end. But for the time being, I think this is at least something, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, any closing thoughts from you, Joey, on this? Uh, how do, what do we make with this? Uh, yeah, can uh, I recommend a device? can I recommend a book? You oh, know, I yes. like to read. So yeah. one book yeah. I just <laughs> one book I just finished reading is uh, Jonathan Lehman's One Assembly, and uh, in this book, he's not addressing online, but he is addressing multi services and multi site, and I do think it is somewhat relevant. And what's really compelling is uh, he does a word study uh, on the word ecclesia which is, you know, translate oftentimes church. And basically what he's kind of, what he argues, which is very convincing for me, is he says, on one hand, when we talk about, oftentimes you hear the phrase, oh, church is a people, not a place or a building, right? We oftentimes hear that. And he actually argues, yes, but also no. That when you look at actually the word ecclesia in the New Testament, yes, it oftentimes refers to the universal church or the people of God, right? In terms of their identity, but a lot of the times, it's also referring to a specific local physical gathering of God's people. 
and what he's saying is that church on one hand is people yes but it is it, but it's also god's people gathered together physically and so really really compelling and i think very uh convicting too as we think about it and I, that's why i think i start off this uh, conversation talking about making the distinction between the universal church and the local church and what are the similarities and also what are the differences too you know as we think about what does it mean to worship online what does it mean to be a part of a church you know whether online or physically together yeah yeah and i think one of the best ways uh we can just uh maybe close this out is that Right now, we are providentially hindered from being able to meet together. And so this is a supplement. This is an imitation, but it is not a replication of the church. And so during this time, I think just like what Pastor Chris said, let us leverage the technology we have. Be thankful yeah. that we can still gather together. And, and a topic that I, I, we didn't even have time to talk about is uh, even though this is not church online we want to encourage all members to continue to mm -hmm. log in and watch their church's mm -hmm. sermons because yeah. it's you're still growing and learning together and there is something about the corporate learning of walking through a passage together or a sermon yeah. together it's not a time for you to just hop around and just you know go to the go to whatever pastor you want to listen to but what does mm -hmm. it look like to be able to continue to grow together even though we are apart but when yeah. we for the time that we do come back together yeah yeah. Um, yeah. Could I throw in two quick things? Is that okay? Yeah. No. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead. I mean, I think one, one thing very practically, I think I mentioned before, kind of the, the importance of the physical is one thing we encourage our church members is actually on Sunday mornings to act as if you are physically going to a worship service. So like get showered, kind of wear your church clothes or whatever it is. Right. And wherever you're watching the live stream, don't watch it from your bed you know, watch in the family room or living room, you know, just kind of, I think our physical posture and our physical kind of preparation actually helps us in our spiritual engagement, right? I think sometimes as Christians, we say, oh, well, it's all about the heart, right? Yes, it is. But matters of the heart and our intent is also, it's also reflected in how we physically do things too. You know what I mean? And so even in our, in our, online worship services, we ask people during the praise and worship time to physically stand and to sing, right? Don't just kind of sing kind of from while you're lying down or lounging, but actually physically. And I think that helps us to engage with God too, right? Again, God has created us not just as spiritual beings, but physical beings as well. So just yeah. maybe something that may be helpful well, for listeners. That is, or your... No, that's super helpful. It reminds me of uh, the great theologian, Alan Iverson, <laughs> we're not talking about the game. We're talking about practice, but we know that practice in the game matters, right? So That's even true. though we're not part of the church, uh, being at home, it, it still matters. So uh, yeah. keep on walking through those physical steps of worship until we can actually gather again. And hopefully yeah. this just continues to wet the palate of that we can come back together. This shouldn't be, you shouldn't, you shouldn't leave this season feeling like, oh, that was the same thing. Mm -hmm. It should yeah. go, man, that's something missing. And yeah. I can't wait for us to get back together because there is something missing with the, yeah. uh, the physical, the physical gathering, corporate gathering of the saints is something that we should not take so lightly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, but that's all the time we have for this week. I have no idea how long this went because I forgot to turn on my timer. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at my stopwatch and it said zero zeros. I'm like, I have no idea how long this took. Sorry, listeners. <laughs> we <went way> over <laughs> time. So I have no idea. So it's my fault. But I'd like to thank Pastor Joey for joining us this week. Just incredible yeah, insights. You. Really, really good. I uh, really appreciate him. And thank you all of you, our listeners, for tuning in and supporting us with this podcast. And I hope that this was really helpful for you and that you will take some of those uh, practical applications to heart. You know, wake up early in the morning. Get yourself ready. Maybe have breakfast. Change into the clothes that you'll normally wear on Sunday. Stand when we worship. Actually take notes. And, you know, as if we were... Um, and as if we were really gathering until we can actually gather, it helps us be able to mm -hmm. engage with our minds. Uh, so please join us next week as we answer another one of your questions of life and faith. Uh, love y'all and see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.